This is the work of Paul Cezanne. He was a French artist known for his still lifes. Well, that was the main thing he was known for. Uh, he lived from about 1839 to 1906. And a still life is just a painting of something that's stationary, that's in one place. Like it could be on your desk or your table. And he did apples in this one, which is what we're going to be doing, is we're going to be doing an apple. Now, we look at this apple, and you can see from the top of it that it's lighter. That the lights from my studio here make this lighter, and it looks almost kind of yellow. The bottom of it is darker, and looks more, actually more red. Now, granted, this apple is a little yellow too, but the light tends to change the color. And we're going to talk about value, which is here's Cezanne and still life. We just talked about, but value is how dark or light something is. Like this is a very dark value and it goes to a medium and it goes to a light. Now that's a little easier when you're doing with pencil or charcoal or something, but in color, it becomes a little more difficult. So we're going to do this starting I would say start with drawing with a pencil first. I'm going to use charcoal just so you can see it. So I draw my apple, which is just basically a circle with a little dip in it. Maybe you can put a stem there if you want. And then I'm going to draw it like it's on a table. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the colors. I'm going to go, because the top of it is going to look, I want to simulate the light. So I'm going to go with yellow. Even if the apple was red, completely red, I'm going to go with yellow. Because the top was much lighter and more, more yellow than red. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to an orange. Yes, I know yellow and orange aren't red, but they're related colors. Orange is made from yellow and red. So we want related colors. So I'm going to go with an orange around here. Now, I'm doing this with crayons. And the reason I'm showing you with crayons is that that's what most of you have. So I'm going to go with a yellow. But I want to blend my yellow and my orange together like that. Now, now I'm going to go with a red because that's the color that the apple is generally. But nothing, I've, we've talked about this before, nothing is really just one color. Also, you notice that I'm coloring with curves. I want to show the curve of the apple. So when I make my marks, I make them curved. Because if I just go straight across, it's going to make the apple look like it's flat. So the next thing I'm going to use is a red violet or a purple. Some people will call it purple because it does have red in it. So it's going to give that impression. And then if I want to get a little darker, I can even go with a violet or a it's a, you sometimes would call it purple, but it's more of a blue and red than it is a more red than blue. And I'm going to make a shadow. Now, after that's done, I'm going to go with a dark blue and make it really dark, much darker. Now, if I start losing my red, all I have to do is go back and go over the whole thing with red. That dark violet and purple is going to show up. And so I can still have my red apple. I'm just layering colors. And this is a more sophisticated art concept that a lot of you probably aren't used to or I really haven't done that much. But it's a really important one. Now if I want to make that whole thing stand out and really come out, I'm going to go with green behind it. Because green and red are complementary colors and so the green really makes the apple stand out. Now, we'll talk more about this when we get in class, but this is the general idea. So, I will see you this week in class for our still life.